Hi everyone, this is Sahil from QuickNode and in this video, we will learn about MEV, Maximal Extractable Value. So without any ado, let's jump into it. MEV, which is short for Maximal Extractable Value, refers to the extra value that can be squeezed out of arranging block transactions in a certain way. In simple terms, MEV is the extra value that can be extracted apart from the standard block rewards or gas fees by miners or validators or even some clever bot operators by including, excluding or rearranging transactions. The term MEV came into place during the Ethereum proof of work era when it was called minor extractable value because during that time miners could rearrange the transactions but now even validators or even some bot operators can do that now let's understand mbv with the help of an example so let's assume that there is a open queue to get into a club now the rule is that each and everyone who wants to get into the club needs to pay the bouncer a fee and whoever pays the higher fee gets into the club because bouncer prioritize them now relating this to block transactions let's assume that there are few transactions all again in an open queue waiting to get added into the block now this queue is called mempool since this is a permissionless environment and open for anyone to see there can be a scenario when the validator looks at the transactions and see what they are doing and if they see that there's going to be a large transaction, they can put their own transaction in place. As you can see over here, that a validator has put by 1 million TOC tokens before the 10 million TOC token order so that they can sell the token after the price has increased after that huge token order. Now, similarly, there can be a scenario where there is a bot which is monitoring all the transactions and there is a predefined condition there is a condition that whenever there is a huge token order place a transaction with higher gas price as you can see over here transaction number one is for one million talk token which is sent with higher gas price before the 10 million talk token transaction which is now to transaction number two so this is also called front running and this is how mev takes place there are various kinds of mev scenarios which generally can be classified into two categories the first is good mev where the mev practices are value aligned and system stabilizing whereas on the other hand there can be some bad mev practices as well which can be predatory and user harming following are the types of mev under each category now let's talk about arbitrage. In this practice, a uh, asset is bought for low on one DEX and sold for high on another DEX. For example, let's see there is a bot which sees Ethereum for $2,000 on Uniswap and sees Ethereum for $2,020 on SushiSwap. So what it does is it buys Ethereum for low for $2,000 on Uniswap and sells it for high for $2,020 on SushiSwap. In this scenario, it generated the profit and helped stabilizing the price. Another example is liquidations, where repaying under collateralized loans and claiming the collateral happens with the help of bots. For example, lending protocols like Aave, which are open source, have processes for liquidations. And in scenarios where value of collaterals on those lending protocols are dropping, there are multiple users or entities trying to grab that collateral on a discounted rate. So there can be a bot which looks at those transactions in the mempool and sends a transaction with higher gas price to the lending protocol, pays the loan and grabs the collateral at a discounted rate and thus keeping Aave solvent because it just took the collateral whose value was dropping away from Aave and paid the role to Aave. So in this case, it's a good MEV practice. Another example is backrunning where trades are executed after large transactions to capture leftover opportunities. For example, there can be a bot which keeps on listening for certain types of transactions and as soon as that transaction happens, it will send its own transaction to gain profit. In this example, you can see that the bot is listening for talk 
token transactions where in the transaction number one as soon as the user buys 10 million talk token thus increasing the price of talk token the bot will detect that and instantly send the sell transaction for talk tokens whatever it was holding thus gaining profit and also not harming the user because it's selling the tokens after the user has already bought hence not affecting users trade so it can be a good type of MEV. Another example is transaction bundling where transactions are bundled and sent privately avoiding the public mempool so that no one can see those transactions and front run them. Usually this is done via a MEV provider like Flashbots for Ethereum and Jitto for Solana. So what happens is the transactions are bundled and sent via the MEV provider directly to blockchain or a validator client which is specialized to receive bundle and process bundles along with a tip for the MEV provider added with the gas fee. Now comes the bad practices of MEV where front running is the most common one which we already saw where a trade is executed right before a profitable or large trade. For example, there can be a bot which keeps on looking for large transactions and sends a transaction similar to that with higher gas fee eventually front running that transaction and then they can sell that for profit in future. So what this will result in to the user who is sending the transaction number two getting the talk tokens on a higher price. Now comes sandwich attack where one trade is executed before and one trade is executed after a user's trade to exploit price movement. For example, in this case, the bot is again listening for talk token buy transactions. And as soon as it detects a buy transaction, it will front run that transaction by sending its own transaction with higher gas fee, thus getting its transaction before the user and then the user's transactions comes and then after the user's transaction, the bot again sends another transaction to sell those tokens. So in this case, the bot generated the profit by buying and selling the tokens. But the user was at loss here because it got bad pricing and position because of bot's front run transaction. Now, another example is NFT mint sniping. where paying a higher gas fee to mint rare NFTs before any other users. For example, there can be a bot which looks for NFT minting transactions and send a transaction with higher gas fee front running the other transactions and buy the NFT before them, thus securing better NFTs before any other users. And the last and probably most serious type of bad MEV practices is time bandit attacks. In this, validators or miners deserialize the block for better earning. Let's take an example that there is a blockchain with block 1, 2 and 3 and there is an upcoming block. Now a validator or miner can see that there is another block which is not yet in the queue but has higher rewards so the validator can replace the actual block in the queue with the block with higher rewards thus destabilizing the consensus of the blockchain and in some cases it can also do this to grab missed arbitrage opportunities in the past all the bad mev practices which we saw are highly unethical and harms the industry and users a lot the following are some tools from Quicknote Marketplace which will help you tackle bad MEV practices and make your transactions stronger. Check them out from the link in the description below. So I hope you learned a lot about MEV in this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the Quicknote YouTube channel and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.